going on? Why can't I go live? What is happening right now? I can't, I... Okay, what in the world? Having issues, yes. Um. If you were just in the last live stream, I'm really sorry. I don't know what just happened, but my stream here. If you were just in the last live stream, I'm really sorry. I don't know. Okay, am I? I am live. I'm live now. Oh my god. I'm sorry. That took forever. I am live. I'm live now. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry. I was just, I, <laughs> that was so weird. That was like weird inception moment. I was like watching myself realize I was live. That was so weird. That has never happened to me before where I'm like in the back end, I'm using StreamYard and I went live and I was talking to myself for like three minutes, <laughs> like pulling up your chat and stuff. And, but like the chat just said zero and I was like, oh, well, that's weird. But sometimes that it takes a minute to like catch up and show me how many people are on the live. And then a couple minutes passed and it was still zero. I was like, that's not, that doesn't seem right. Um, but my goodness, we've made it and we're, and we're live now. So just <laughs> gonna have to redo that whole intro. My goodness. Hello, Corey is here. Um, I'm glad the chat is already taken off. Amazing. Fans of something. Christine is your favorite carpenter foam. Okay, cool. They live for you. Very nice. Anthony's here. Thank you guys for coming back, by the way. Yes, part two. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, oh, you should see they live. You should. Um, George is here. Hey, um, thank you. And I got your tip on the last one, by the way. George sent in a tip on the last one, but I, I wasn't live for some reason. So thank you. Um, would I, will I be doing a ranking today? If so, I'm intrigued where everything, not, uh, not the top two will land. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do my official ranking today because I'm still not sure where everything is going to land. I wanted to do this live before I release that video, which I think is going to be Thursday. I'm pretty sure I'm going to film it tomorrow and script it today. Um, but I just, I wanted to see your guys' perspective on a couple movies and see if I could gain a little bit of a new perspective on some of them. Uh, because I, I rated a lot of them the same on Letterboxd. A lot of his movies are three stars or three and a half stars, or a lot of them are two and a half actually, or lower. So I, I kind of wanted to see how you guys felt and maybe I would you know, gain a new perspective, new insight to, to figure out how to rank them. Cause I'm still not totally sure. I have like a rough outline because today, this morning, actually, I finally finished watching every single Carpenter film. Um, well, not, not technically I've watched everything he's ever directed at this point, all, all 24 films. He's done scores on, I think over 30 films at this point. Uh, he, he's a writer on a good amount of films, um, but a, a couple that he didn't direct as well. I didn't watch those because a lot of them are quite a bit older and I, I frankly had not heard of them. So yeah, that's, that's what's going on today. I thought that we could kind of kick it off talking about like just our, our general feelings about his career. Maybe you guys could list a couple of your favorites. And then I do have pulled up in chronological order, the list of every movie uh, that he directed. So we can kind of, I don't know. I thought it would make sense to talk about them in order. I am live. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh, we see you. I know. Yeah. Sorry. That was, that was awkward. It, it was still kind of glitching. Like when I first pulled this one up too. Sorry if you saw me frustrated and talking to myself. I typically do tend to do that. Uh, but alas. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to welcome the people that are going to watch this on uh, the replay. So welcome to you guys as well. You know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to say hi to you guys too. Okay. Amazing. Oh, she's alive and kicking. Absolutely. George and Rob, always good to see you guys. Aw. Are you guys, like, becoming friends? Because that's adorable. But good to have you, Austin. Uh, came in just in time to smoke a bowl. Hell yeah. Uh, afternoon. Welcome. Hello, Nero Film. What's up? King of the Dead is here. Amazing. Hey, everyone. Are you a newcomer? I don't know if I recognize your, uh, your avatar. Um... Oh, you're from Ireland. Very cool. Very cool. Glad to have you. 
If the question is a favorite Carpenter movie, I'm going to say The Thing, But They Live is real good. Those are both really good choices too. You meant expected top two. I don't know if I'm really going to surprise you guys too much with my top two. I think that they are everybody's top two for a reason, you know? I th There are a lot of people that find his B-tier kind of work to be really underrated. In my venture of watching every single John Carpenter directed movie, I don't think I found too many that I would consider to be under my radar, you know, or, you know, ones that should have been in my radar, but we can, we'll get into all of that. I think as we like go in order, where does John Carpenter land amid horror directors all time for everyone? Oh my gosh. I feel like I, well, okay, listen, I've seen a lot of horror in my day, obviously, but I have not taken the time to really explore director by director. So I think that I'm going to be personally able to answer this question probably after I make my way into this series a little bit more. The only other directors I feel pretty intimately familiar with, I would say, are like James Wan and Lee Wanell, but that's just because that's more my generation, you know? It's a lot more modern. So I've just happened to see more of their movies. Um, but it'll be really interesting, interesting to compare you know, I'd love to maybe do a comparison video between John Carpenter and Wes Craven and just talk about their general styles and everything. I think that would also be an interesting addition to that series that I want to do. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on that as well. You need to watch The Fog. There's a remake of The Fog? How did I not know that? What? It, oh, I'm just, I need to look it up really quick because I actually had no idea that existed. The Fog, oh, 2005. Oh, no wonder. Okay. No wonder I haven't heard of this. Interesting. It looks like made for TV, like really bad. <laughs> okay. Oh, no wonder. Uh, the thing is a standout for me. I would have to say me too. Never gets old. Still creeps you out. Amazing. Fantastic movie. Yes. In the Mouth of Madness was awesome and original. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's definitely original. That one is, that one goes off the rails. <laughs> You're going to have to be basic and say Halloween is my favorite. You know, it's everyone's favorite for a reason. So I'm not going to blame anybody for, like, being basic, you know what I mean? He is a legacy horror director for you. He's not your favorite, but you respect his work. And I think that's kind of where I fall right now, um, if we're just talking about, like, our general feelings on Carpenter. I am not as big of a Carpenter fan as I thought I was going to be. I think a lot of his work is so hyped up, which to me is understandable, like, given... The, the audience that he was catering to at the time. I think it's understandable and I, I totally get why some people are obsessed with his work, but it's, I think it's just maybe his style. I don't know. It's a lot of his stuff is not really for me. Um, it's, it's very theatrical. It's really over the top. Like I'm thinking Christine, the thing, uh, Prince of Darkness. Those are all really just, I don't know, over the top practical effects, stuff like that. Same with the fog, you know, it's just that kind of stuff is, Oh, <laughs> oh, excuse me. No, nope, not again. Not again. Um, <laughs> I think that I, I mean, okay, so there's the thing, which is fantastic, but I think that I personally feel like Carpenter works best within simplicity, you know, which is why I love Halloween so much. I ended up really liking Assault on Precinct 13 as well, which is a really simple concept. Um, or if there's a, a high concept with a more basic execution, like I actually really enjoyed Village of the Damned. I don't know if I could say it's underrated, but I enjoyed it quite a bit more than I thought I would. Nobody really talks about that one and granted it is a remake, but still nonetheless, um, it's uh, essentially about these like evil alien children <laughs> kind of, but it's, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like it was done in an over-the-top kind of way or Starman where you know it's it's this grieving widow <clears throat> and this alien comes to earth and takes on the form of her dead husband it's a really interesting exploration of grief you know and and what it means to be human and everything which is which is super high concept but it was it was very basic and execution you know which I think works really well I'm just not a, a super big fan of like the really theatrical over-the-top practical effect kind of stuff, I guess. I've been chatting. I've been chatting away. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Oh, Halloween 2 is one of your personal favorites, even though it wasn't technically directed from him. He did write and produce it. I, I thought about including that 
in, you know, today's discussion and on my ranking, but I was like, no, it's just cleaner if I just do movies he's directed. Because otherwise I'd feel compelled to include, you know, maybe stuff that he's scored even. I Because my one of my favorite scores of his of all time, by the way, if we want to talk his scores, is actually from Studio 666, which is uh, the, the, the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters made a movie. <laughs> And it is so weird, but I really enjoyed it. And I love the score. And he actually has a cameo in that movie, which is just so fun. Um, anyway, your your favorite horror film is uh, Halloween, but Candyman is your second. Okay, yeah. not I don't like the new one either, to be honest. You love They Live. Yeah, it's one of the best critiques of capitalism I've ever seen. Yeah, and I've also, to prepare for my John Carpenter video, I've been watching... <clears throat> a bunch of archival interviews. There was one that I found with him, John Landis, and David Cronenberg that was from the uh, the early 80s or might have been late 70s because they introduced them as saying, and this is John Carpenter who is currently working on a movie called The Thing. I was like, oh my god. The fact that the three of them were, you know, in the same room in the same interview was just crazy. Um, why am I talking about that? I forget how I got on that tangent. I'm sorry. Jog my memory if you feel compelled, but I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Was Craven's movies hit differently? Yeah, it'll be uh it'll be really interesting to compare Halloween to the likes of Scream, which is making commentary on Halloween. I think that'll be fun to do. You're not a fan of They Live? Oh, wait. Oh, I remember why I was talking about that now. Um, okay, so yeah, They Live. I, I was watching one of the, the archival interviews and then I, I, I found one that was a lot more current. And in both of them, he was saying, yeah, it's pretty much a response to Reaganism. And Carpenter was like, I mean, I'm a capitalist. I love making money, but this is, you know, capitalism off the rails. It's it's unchecked untethered capitalism um, and it needs to stop. And he's and the the last interview I saw of his, I think that was the most recent, was from 2016. It was before our presidential election. And he was talking about like, you know, how they live is as relevant as ever. And I think that's one I'll probably want to touch on and dive into the most during my ranking video, just because they live is, it's really interesting. It's a, it's a really interesting critique. Definitely. The Fog remake is awful. Yeah. I don't feel compelled to watch it. <laughs> Uh, you just mentioned it. Oh, yeah. You were thinking of asking my thoughts of comparing Carpenter and Craven. I definitely want to do that. But I like if I look at Carpenter or if I look at Craven's filmography from what he directed, I don't know that I've really seen too much. Like, let me let me see. Obviously, I've seen all the Scream movies. I've seen A Nightmare on Elm Street. So at least I've done that. Oh, Red Eye is one that I feel like is a little bit underrated. I have seen that one. I've never seen The Hills Have Eyes just because I don't know if the subject matter is really for me. Um, and then besides that, I don't think I've seen... Well, New Nightmare. Uh, but besides that, yeah, I don't think I've seen any of his other work. And I've heard really good things about like The Last House on the Left, The People Under the Stairs. So those are ones I'm excited to see. But yeah, there's just so much Craven that I have not seen, which is really interesting. So anyway, you John Carpenter wipes the floor with Wes Craven. Ouch. Not a Scream fan, maybe? The OG Fog is the best. I wasn't super big on the Fog. Uh, but, it, but it's interesting, though. He was talking about it in one interview about how... Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, okay, so it was Carpenter that was saying he thought that the Fog... <clears throat> should have its PG rating. He intended it for it to be a PG movie. But then I think David Cronenberg was saying that he went like with his daughter or something to see the movie. And he was talking about how I think there just needs to be some kind of rating for movies for kids. I don't know, 13 and 14 and up. And I'm like, oh, buddy, like they hadn't even invented PG-13 at that point. So yeah, it's, it's really weird that The Fog is is actually a PG movie. And same with like Poltergeist from 1982, which I just can't believe. But anyway, you're beginning to realize you haven't watched enough classic horror. I came to that realization myself about two and a half years ago when I decided to start this YouTube channel. <laughs> mm. You think you've only seen The Thing, not even Halloween? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, the ha Halloween does not really have gore. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, I'll look at his list and see. I mean, the thing is by far his goriest, most, you know, body horror centric movie, I would say. Um, I mean, Christine, there's not a lot of body horror in that, right? Let's see. 
I, I like Assault on Precinct 13. Okay, mm, maybe I'll just go through my, my must watches. I would say Assault on Precinct 13. It's not great, but it's simple. I think it's well done. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Halloween, Someone's Watching Me, I also really liked. Uh, you, you probably should watch The Fog just because it's, it's a classic Carpenter, but I'm not crazy about it. Um, same, same goes for Escape from New York. I'm not crazy about that movie. I thought I would be. I thought I'd like it more. And I'd say Christine, maybe Starman, um, Big Trouble in Little China. And then beyond that, there's not much that I would consider to be a much, a must watch. I wouldn't even say that Big Trouble in Little China is a must watch because it, it, it's, I don't know. I, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Okay. Um, it's a lot of fun though. I, it was a little bit tough for me to get through, but then by the time we got to the third act, it was just balls to the wall off the rails. So much fun. So I'm really glad that I stuck it out, but I wouldn't consider it like a must watch, but let me know what you guys think though. What are, what are your guys' must, must watch? Can't wait for this ranking. Oh, Tiago. Hey, hey. Um, let's see. Oh, John Carpenter made my favorite vampire film, Vampires. I, to be honest, I did not like that movie. <laughs> Everybody was such a dick in that movie. I was, I just, I couldn't get into it. Have I seen Body Bags? Yes, I have. I did include that on this list here. It's an anthology movie that is hosted by Carpenter. Yes, and he plays this, this real creepy, funny little, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but essentially he's playing like the mortician kind of in this, in the morgue. And he's kind of telling you the stories of a couple of the bodies there. So that's what the different, um, that's what the different stories are in the anthology. Um, let's see. Oh, I missed this. Thank you. Your introduction to Carpenter was with me as a six-year-old watching Escape from LA with my dad and remembered how awesome Snake Plissken was to me. He is a great character. I Though I don't really love the movies, um, I, I think that Kurt Russell as Snake Plissken is really fun. And he is funny in those movies. I never really realized how much of a comedian Kurt Russell could be also, uh, especially in Big Trouble in Little China, which is a movie that I don't know that it necessarily pulls this off, but it's about Kurt Russell's character realizing that he is actually the sidekick because he's kind of a bumbling idiot. Uh, and it's it's meant to kind of be a a play on the trope of the the handsome white guy action hero who has a person of color as his sidekick, you know? It's kind of like the reversal of Indiana Jones. Cause oh, and there was an interview where Carpenter said they they the studio thought they were getting Indiana Jones. That's basically what they asked for with Big Trouble in Little China. And so he kind of just <laughs> I to my understanding, he kind of played with the character and like flipped it on its head, which I think is really funny. I don't know that it's necessarily pulled off super well, but I, you know, it I enjoy the intention, I guess. Oh, after I do my director series, will I do a top 10 directors video? That's a really good idea. I could definitely include that on my series for sure. Um, <clears throat> you consider him the godfather of slashers? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Though he did get a lot of inspiration from like Black Christmas. And I, I Halloween almost feels like a loose, a loose sequel to Black Christmas now that I think about it. You know? In the Mouth of Madness is very cool, like a Lovecraftian Alice in Wonderland. Ooh, that's a really good way to describe it. I might use that. I might use that. Yeah, Studio 666 is great. I only give it two and a half stars, but I still loved it. Like, it's hard to explain. It's, well, I mean, not really. It's like, it's one of those ones that's so bad that it's good, kind of. Um, but yeah, definitely bad, but a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the tip, George. Favorite John Carpenter score? Yeah, I I think I got to go with Studio 666. I think it's just because it's so much fun. He was working with, you know, a rock and roll band, Foo Fighters, and I'm sure that they might have had a little bit of an influence on the score as well. And so it's just, it's great. I don't, I can't play it. I If, I'll, if I play like five seconds of a, of a song, I will get a copyright strike, which is just so annoying. Um, or not a strike, but like, I, this will get demonetized, which just sucks. Yeah, Assault on Precinct 13 is in your top five. Nice. I think it, it it might end up in my top five. It depends. I would rate it higher than most other Carpenter stuff, but in terms of like entertainment value, I don't know if I I don't know if I'll put it in my top five. We'll see. But you agree about Starman, you really enjoyed it. Yeah, nice. I Starman seems 
rated a little bit higher than it's worth on Letterboxd. There are a lot of people on there that are like, how is this considered B-tier John Carpenter? This is a masterpiece about grief and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know that I agree that it was a, a good cathartic release for the main character, for her dead husband to come back in the form of an alien or for an alien to come. Essentially, I don't, you, know, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Uh, just to like spend time with him with a couple more days and whatever. I, like, I, I get it, but it's, I don't know. That doesn't really hit me in the way that I feel like it, it hits a lot of other people for whatever reason. You don't mind Village of the Damned, but it's too similar to the original. Okay, it doesn't do enough to really justify watching it instead of the original. See, I haven't seen the original, so maybe I would feel differently if I had, but as, as I haven't, then, you know, such is life. I, I, I stole the words out of your super chat, I know, um, but I read it anyways. Yeah, that interview was fascinating. Okay, you have seen it? Yeah, that was, it was so cool. It was so cool, and David Cronenberg has just always also been so well-spoken. That man is so smart. Like, he just must be so smart, um, which obviously comes across in his movies, but he also had those, like, great, he had a great 70s haircut and these great big old 70s glasses. I loved it. It was just, it was great. You can find a lot of really cool, like, archived interviews on YouTube, actually, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, but also, I typically will do all the research for you and then present it to you in my videos. Anyone seen the short Michael vs. Jason? No, I didn't know that one existed. Well, I'm sure that plenty exist, actually. I'm sure there's there's plenty. Because anybody can get those masks, you know. Did I see his Masters of Horror episodes? Yep, and I included those on this list. So that would be Cigarette Burns and Pro-Life. I'm going to include those on my ranking because they are, they are an hour long each. So they do classify as short films. I also included his very first uh, short film that he directed while he was still in college. That was called Captain Voyeur. It's only eight minutes long. So yeah, pretty much everything he's ever directed, I, I'm going to include. He is one of the last old school directors. Yeah, and he has not directed anything since 2010. So, I mean, I, I'm just glad that he focused on music, honestly, because I love his scores quite a bit. Though the new Firestarter score sounds exactly like the Halloween 2018 slash Halloween Kills scores. I'm pretty sure he just threw them a sample. So I'm not really a fan of that one. But I also, I love, I love how much more layered his scores are now. Because I I love the, the original Halloween score and the simplicity of it. But the the one from Halloween Kills specifically, oh God, I I love them. And the one from Studio 666 dressed, ooh, top tier, top tier Carpenter scores. Carpenter is better than Wes Craven, period. I don't know. I think just, just based on what I've seen between like Scream and A Nightmare on Elm Street and you know, all of Carpenter's movies now, their styles seem really different, but that's just with me not seeing enough of Craven yet, especially with Scream. Like, the Scream movies to me don't feel comparable at all to really anything that Carpenter has made, so I don't know, I don't know how I would really go about determining who is best. Like, if, if I end up enjoying more of Craven's filmography and I feel like he has more strong films than Carpenter does, then I'd probably lean towards Craven just because I'm such a big fan of Scream. Um, and I would definitely prefer Scream over like Halloween and The Thing, which are a couple of my favorites of Carpenter's. So I don't know. I don't know. That's going to be hard for me to, for me to say. Hi, not horror, but uh, Precinct is in your top five. Yeah. Oh, wait. I... I think I already read this this one. You might have commented it again. <clears throat> yeah, Rachel McAdams should be in more thriller movies. I, I think she was great in Red Eye. That was it was a really simple kind of plot. Um, but I think that they pulled it off pretty well. It's not it's nothing great, but I really enjoyed that movie. I owned it on DVD actually. Thank you, George. You have a carpenter film in which the concept is great, but the execution isn't good or lives up. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of them. There's a couple of them, honestly. And I, I feel bad because I know that a lot of people really enjoy these movies, but okay. I think the fog is a really, really cool concept, like ghost pirates. And maybe it's just because he always had the intention of making it PG and not R that it's just a little... I, not, not not childish, like a little bit cartoonish maybe though. So I feel like The Fog is a really, really cool concept. 
And I, I would even love to see like a better remake of it if the 2005 one is terrible. You know, I think that could be redone in a really, really cool way. Kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean a little bit, actually. Like Curse of the Black Pearl. It's kind of giving that vibe. Uh, but I, I felt like that could have been done better. And then my, honestly, my biggest disappointment of all of his work was Escape from New York. I'm sorry to say it. Uh, I just, I just felt like with that kind of a concept, so high concept, like, okay, don't get me wrong. I really, really admire the fact that Carpenter was independent for so long, like wrote, directed, produced so many of his own movies and like put his stamp on them. He said, yeah, John Carpenter's Halloween, John Carpenter's, like he puts his name on it and rightfully so because he puts so much work and effort into it. But Escape from New York, I respect that he doesn't let a small budget hold him back. However, I feel like sometimes it should. Sometimes it should, just because there was so much potential for Escape from New York. Having New York be a federal prison, like the, the entire island, that is such an insane concept. And then again with Escape from LA, I just felt like the same thing happened, where it's like, I, I respect that you don't hold back. You make the movies you want to make, no matter how much money you have. But I, I feel like they needed more. Um, it's just, there just was a lot of missed opportunity, I think. And I don't really know how I would fix it. You know, don't ask me. But I love the openings of both of those movies, especially Escape from New York. I love the whole opening and the setup. I think that looks great. But then once he actually gets into New York, I just don't feel like they really play it up enough. Like there's these... There's the weirdos, and then there's, like, the gangsters, essentially. And I don't feel like enough of that was really explored. And I also felt like I was going to be getting an insane, you know, crazy action movie, when in reality, there is so much dialogue. There's so much dialogue in that movie, and I just wish that more would have happened, you know? So, anyway. <clears throat> Do I like Halloween or The Thing more? I think I'll let you know during my ranking. I think I'll let you know then. Um, let's see. Oh, Ghost of Mars. I couldn't even finish that movie. I I did see something. Uh, I think it was... I might have found this on, like, Wikipedia, actually. I cannot remember. They were pulling it from an article, but he said with Ghosts of Mars, he had very, very little involvement. And that makes sense to me. He says, I would show up and say hi to everybody, and then I would go home. So I don't know how true that is, but that is a quote from Carpenter. Uh, and, yeah, Ghosts of Mars was terrible. I couldn't... I, I lasted, I think, about 15 minutes longer than my dad did, but my dad left. He, he walked out of that one <laughs> with me, but we tried it out. Oh, thank you for the kind message yet again. I hope everyone has a fun and safe day filled with tons of love and positivity. I will read that one every single time I see it. Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, so Halloween is on your list, but haven't seen it. We'll do it this year. This is the perfect year to do it, you know, with Halloween Ends coming out and the end of this new trilogy. It's a good time. You're going to sound crazy if you think Halloween 2 is a masterpiece. You know, a lot of people really love that movie, so I'm not going to discount you. I I would disagree, um, I but it's just because I, I can't really help but hold it up to the original and also some of the better Halloween movies that have come out since then, but it's enjoyable. Like, it's one that I'll definitely keep re-watching. There's plenty from that franchise that I will not. Oh, yes. If there were ever to be a They Live remake, it would obviously have to be done properly, have Carpenter on board with the project. It's something I'd love to, speak, to see, especially now with all the tech. Yeah, with today's technology, and especially because the theme is still so relevant, they could even make a, a sequel or a requel. You know, why not? They they could. They really could. Um, I mean, the... the hmm. Okay, I'm not going to talk any spoilers about the movies, and especially because we have somebody here that hasn't seen Halloween, so I guess I won't talk spoilers about Halloween either, but the, they could do a sequel to They Live. They easily could, and I would be very interested in that. Even on Letterboxd, I was like, I volunteer to remake this movie because I think They Live could be remade in a really interesting and very different way today, so I would love to see that. Or a sequel. I'd be fine with either. Um, yeah, Killian Murphy is great in that movie. He's just a great actor. 
I do not understand the hype behind his, what is it? Is he in Peaky Blinders with his, with his haircut, with his like shaved head and like just where he only has hair on top and everybody thinks he's so fine in that show. I do not like that haircut. I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Oh, you haven't seen Halloween 3. Okay. Yeah, that was the one where it's, he's not listed as a director, but I'm pretty sure he wrote that one, right? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's one you should definitely watch as a just as a horror fan, for sure. Oh, hey, welcome. Sorry for jumping in late. No worries. Oh, I hope you enjoyed. Top Gun Maverick was, was great. Thank you, George. What's a horror film that isn't directed by Carpenter that maybe should have been directed by him? Oh, geez. Oh, geez. It's gonna be hard for me to think of something off the top of my head because I was not alive when I feel like he was in his heyday. Because there was a period of 10 years where he made nine movies, which is just insane to me. Um, movie that he should have directed. That is so hard to say. I'm trying to think of maybe like a like a modern horror movie that would have been cool with Carpenter's touch, but kind of coming up short. Hmm. I could see, you know who actually has a style a little bit similar to Carpenter, I find, is is Don Mancini. But I would say that only really with, like, the original Child's Play. Um, That's not my answer, but just that's just something to note. I don't know. I'm looking over at my horror movies, and I'm like, I don't know. I can't, I honestly don't really have an answer. I think there are plenty of movies where it would have been interesting to see what his his influence would have done, but I don't really have an answer for that. Let me know if you guys do, though. <clears throat> the thing is a masterpiece. I would have to agree. Yeah, Kurt Russell is awesome in, in Big Trouble. I would agree with that. Halloween does feel like a loose sequel to Black Christmas. The opening scene of Halloween was also inspired by Ladder. Yeah, I, yeah and I, I've talked about that before. The, their opening scenes are almost identical. Hmm. Oh, am I super behind on the chat? I am super behind on the chat. That's my bad. Uh, oh, you think that John Carpenter could have made a great version of The Crow? That is one that I surprisingly still haven't seen yet. It's been on my list for a long time, though. Kylie, are you excited for the new Hellraiser? I don't know because I've only seen the original Hellraiser still. I've only seen the very first movie and I thought about watching all of them this year so I could do a ranking of Hellraiser, but I don't know how many people care about that. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. You'll have to let me know. Oh, they were touring before COVID. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I would love, I would love to see that. I would love to see them. Oh my God. I also really, really would love to see a live orchestra, you know, that's, you know, with, you know, watching Hans Zimmer or John Williams perform. Oh, it'd be a dream. John Williams is so old now, though. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Oh, the original Village of the Damned is definitely better. Okay. That typically tends to happen, huh? But, you know, he did prove us wrong with the thing, so. <laughs> just missing Papa Matt. Yeah, he'll be back around at some point. No worries. <clears throat> yeah, the choice of music in Carpenter's movies have always been distinctive to me. Yeah, absolutely. The Thing Halloween and even in the newest reboot of Hall Halloween had some work by him and his son, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's done this. He's doing the score for the entire new trilogy. So I just think that that's amazing. Uh, but The Thing, yeah, I think that's kind of an underrated score of his. It's, it's hard for me to conjure it to mind. I can't really, I can't really do it into the mic, but hopefully you know what it is. It reminds me a little bit of Jaws, just a little bit, which is cool, but he actually, he didn't technically compose that. He, he had a, he had an, an Italian composer do the score of the thing, but he did meet with him in Italy and kind of break down exactly the vibe that he wanted. So he could, you know, yeah, yeah there, there's a trans woman as Pinhead. Yes. One of the best decisions ever. The horror genre and LGBTQ plus fit together always. Absolutely. It's just, it's just always been really, really the most progressive genre just in film period, which is amazing. And it makes sense because Pinhead doesn't have a gender anyways. So it, it just, it all adds up, doesn't it? It's hard to beat him and Wes Craven. So big shoes to fill. I, okay, it's hard for me to say because I love Scream so much, but in terms of effective horror, I honestly would say, mm, I might disagree. I might disagree. Just because there are some modern directors that I 
that I, I think I do prefer. Oh, hey, from Australia. Good morning. Is it the 20th over there already? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> Halloween 78 was the first horror movie you saw. Oh, when you were three. Holy cow. Do you remember it, actually? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> You're more of a Craven fan because of Scream. Yeah, otherwise it's close between them. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm super behind in the chat, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna be missing some of your comments, but I know I got some super chats. Thank you for the tip. <clears throat> Am I at all interested in Leah Winnell's escape from New York? If it happens, oh, I'd be really interested in that. I didn't even know he was in talks to do that. I'm sorry. Also, I'm already starting to lose my voice a little bit somehow. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I'm not wrong about Escape from New York, but you think it was other times? It was, but also, I mean, the Terminator came out roughly around that time as well. I think it was 86, right? And Escape from New York was was 81. So like only a five-year difference. I just, well, okay, granted Terminator had a way bigger budget, so that's not entirely fair. But um, yeah, I mean, yes, it is, it is really quotable. Does have good music. Kurt Russell's amazing, obviously. He's, I, I'm, I'm realizing that Kurt Russell might be one of my favorite actors. I think he's great. And he did so much with John Carpenter. That's something I should also probably touch on when I do that video is, I mean, the amount of times they worked together. Like, let me see. So they met each other when they worked on Elvis in 1979. And then he was also an escape from New York, escape from LA, The Thing, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. And then is that it when they're only five? Only five. I mean, that's that's a good amount for, for two people to work together to make that many movies. Yeah, Ghost of Mars. Another one I've seen that I didn't know was Carpenter. Honestly, terrible. Yeah, there are a couple of his movies where it seems like he didn't really get creative control at all. And you're like, how is this a Carpenter movie? Like, it just, just it doesn't make sense. It's not make sense. Um... <laughs> you hope the Halloween ends just Freaky Friday, Laurie Strode and Michael switch bodies for a day? That'd be so weird. They live with John Cena. Oh my god. That, uh... <sighs> yeah, I mean, like, it could, it could work. I mean, he, he's a comedy actor, you know? He was, I thought he was great in Blockers. And he's not great at being super serious, but I think that the storyline with him in that movie where he's he's dealing with his young daughter becoming a woman and coming into her sexuality and stuff even though he's really funny he he works really well with you know strong strong thematics like i think he he actually might work in a they live i don't know if i if, if he's the face i i would really see as you know being the one to like dive into capitalism and stuff like that but that'd be funny i mean i wouldn't say no Thank you for the tip. I've been here the whole time, just been busy. Oh, you have a dentist appointment in, the, in a bit? Good luck. They just called to move it earlier. They must know how much I want to be here. I may leave early. No worries. No worries about that. I'm glad you're taking care of your teeth. Everybody go to the dentist if it's your time. If you're if you're lacking on that, take care of your teeth. It is, you only get one set, okay? Mm. You compare them, you compare Halloween to Rocky. Okay, they make a worthy double feature. Would you believe me if I told you I have actually not seen the Rocky movies yet? It's just a different time. I, I'm i I'm playing catch up. I'm, I'm gonna be playing catch up for the rest of my life, I think. But there's a lot of stuff I still haven't seen. The Godfather, I haven't seen any Godfather movies. You know what? Twilight is my Godfather. Will I elaborate on that? No, no I won't. Ugh. I don't think there's much to spoil from Halloween. It's pretty basic. Yeah, it, that's true. That's true. I just don't want to spoil the ending because there, there are some fun moments of that movie, you know, with Michael popping up and disappearing out of nowhere, that kind of stuff. So I just don't want to spoil any of those, any of those juicy moments. Yeah, Carpenter also worked on the score for Halloween 3. If I recall correctly, I don't remember loving the score for Halloween 3. Might be Halloween... No, maybe I'm thinking of Halloween 2... I can't remember. Thank you for the tip. How did you feel about Donald Pleasance in Escape from New York as someone outside of Loomis? Also, did you like the sequel? It was also by Carpenter. Yeah, Escape from LA was just more of the same, in my opinion. And it was... They they made it 15 years later. 
the sequel didn't come until 1996. So I don't understand why they were essentially the same movie of essentially the same low quality. Uh, and that's, that's just in relative terms, you know, like the effects and the CG looked very bad. It just, and and I don't know, I, don't, I didn't feel like the, the story was any different either. Um, but Donald Pleasance in Escape from New York, I it was interesting to see. He's also in Prince of Darkness, but he always seems to play the, the straight guy, you know, the, the serious character. Um, maybe I shouldn't say like the straight guy because he, he does, he, he loses it as Loomis. <laughs> and in Prince of Darkness, like, slightly a bit too. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's great. I mean, I, I think he's a great actor. <clears throat> um, the thing 2011, that was, that was not directed by Carpenter though. No, no, it definitely wasn't. I, um, oh, hey, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you for the tip. Your favorite John Carpenter film that's not Halloween is Body Bags. Yes, I did finally watch that one. I did. It was it was fun. I didn't think it was great. I think it's really cool that he teamed up with Toby Hooper and Wes Craven has a cameo. And so does even uh, Roger Corman. If you guys don't know who that is, he was one of the biggest producers in like Hollywood history. He he, I don't even, I, let me just, I'll, I'll just like Google him just to see what like his, his biggest credits are. Um, movies, uh, films produced. So, okay. I mean, to be fair, he was really, really big in like the fifties and sixties. Um, but like, like a lot of Vincent Price stuff, you know, Vincent Price was the biggest horror actor for the longest time. So he produced a lot of his movies. Um, anyway, let's see how he, he is, he's known as quote, the Pope of pop cinema. <laughs> and is known as a trailblazer in the world of independent film. He is still alive and currently 96 years old. So that's Roger Corman. He has a cameo in it as well. Um, and, and Mark Hamill stars in it, but I don't like, I don't like his character in it. He, his performance is great. He, he gets really unhinged, the complete opposite of Luke Skywalker for sure. Um, but yeah, that, that, that movie definitely gave me the ick a couple of times. Um, you'd be down for a Hellraiser series? Okay. I don't think I'd do a whole review series just because there's so much other stuff that I want to do this year that I don't think I'd have time for that before the new one comes out, but I would definitely do a ranking video. Maybe we could have a, we could have a live stream where we just, we talk about the Hellraiser franchise. That would be fun. I'd be down to do that. Maybe I could do the ranking on a live. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever you guys want, honestly. I can I can post a poll in my community tab too to see what you guys are what you guys are into. Oh, your my favorite kill from Halloween kills. <sighs> Cameron's kill was pretty crazy, but that one was like devastating to me. Um I think the <sighs> it's hard to say off the top of my head, but the whole car sequence was pretty great, in my opinion, especially because it was so high stakes and I genuinely did not want those characters to die. So yeah, I think that was a really good one. But mm, my my favorite though, I think I would have to say probably <clears throat> uh, the the older couple. They're not they're not old, but like they they are an older couple, and it's it's uh, the scene where Michael essentially turns one of them into a pin cushion. Oh, fantastic! <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Oh, I haven't even smoked in over a week. Just done a couple edibles here and there lately. Have not really been smoking much. <clears throat> oh, what about Carpenter doing 30 Days of Night? I think it's called, you know, the one with Josh Hartnett. Oh, maybe that's what the person was saying earlier, saying he should have done the thing in 2011. Um, yeah, he, the 30 Days of Night definitely feels very Carpenter-esque. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the only thing is, I feel like the third act of that movie gets really goofy or maybe just the ending I'm thinking of. But yeah, that would have been cool to see to see Carpenter doing that one. Who else gets Patrick Swayze and Kurt Russell mixed up? I mix up Jeff Bridges and Kurt Russell. So Kurt Russell did, I guess, five movies with Carpenter and then Jeff Bridges just did the one. He just did Starman. And for the longest time, for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, Kurt Russell was in Starman. 
no. <laughs> That's who I get next up. I really haven't seen too many Patrick Swayze movies besides, I think the only one might be Dirty Dancing. I'm not sure. Thank you for the tip. When it comes to Hellraiser, um, it's not about how many people care. It's about how many people can keep up with Pinhead in terms of punishment. <laughs> I didn't. I know you can. A Hellraiser TV series is coming. Oh, wow. Oh, it feels, I feel like those people that don't watch Marvel movies because they feel like they're too far behind. That's kind of how I feel about Hellraiser. But I, you know, I did get caught up with Halloween, Friday the 13th, Child's Play, everything. You know, I have, I have done it in the past. I could do it. I could do it. You hated Carpenter's Prince of Darkness? I cannot say I was a fan. I really liked the first half and then it kind of fell apart for me. But there are a lot of people I know that claim that to be one of his most underrated ones for whatever reason. I think it kind of comes down to style preference too. That one had some weird horror elements. Like they used bugs a lot, which is not really my favorite. It's just like, ugh, gross. But you know, not not my not not my fave for sure. Thank you for the tip, George. Hey, would you rank the biggest two classics of Carpenter and Craven? Oh, how would I rank the biggest two classics of Carpenter and Craven? Halloween, The Thing, A Scream, A Nightmare on Elm Street. It, you know, that is tough to argue with. I think that would be my exact answer. <laughs> um, so sorry, it's hard to disappoint. But yeah, I also I also don't want to spoil my rankings, you know, but those those might be pretty obvious, you know. What in the what in the hell is going on? <coughs> I don't know what's happening to my voice. I'm just going to chug some water real quick. Hmm. Yeah, so we, we do have some fans of vampires in the chat. Uh, that one just had a lot of elements going for it that I was not on board with. I just didn't find fun. Uh, like, for example, the, char the prostitute character and what happens with her... And just how everybody is just so casually such a dickhead. Like, the, I don't know, that movie just wasn't a good time for me. And there, there are a lot of people, too, that say that uh, after, I think after the 80s, I mean, after he had his first big, you know, decade where he, as I said, did nine movies in one decade, people say that after, after that, he kind of lost interest or people feel that way when they watch his, you know... 90s early 2000s stuff which I kind of would agree with vampires was 1998 so that would kind of fall in that time period and I don't know how true that is but you know <laughs> Twilight is a masterpiece we've said what we've said absolutely absolutely listen if I if I have to listen to film bros that are like you know talking up the godfather and everything and how it got them into cinema, then I would have to do the same thing for Twilight. Like, if I have to deal with people talking about The Godfather, then they have to deal with me talking about Twilight. Because that just, it, we've said what we've said. That's that's all we need to say. <laughs> oh, you're, you're nervous to see the Halloween Ends trailer during Nope on Thursday. Oh my god, me too. Oh, and it's, it's hard because I'm, I'm going to be so torn between being like, okay, so I should leave my house at the time the movie is starting to avoid like the half hour of trailers, excuse me. Uh, but then at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to miss a single millisecond of Nope. <sighs> so it's going to, it's going to be so, it's going to be so bloody hard to avoid anything about Halloween ends. And I think I'm just going to have to stay off of Twitter, like, maybe until October. I don't know. It's probably not going to be possible because Twitter, as bad as it is, is also just amazing. Like, I <laughs> I don't know. Twitter, I have, the, I have the most laughs on that stupid little blue app. So it's going to be hard, but I think I might just have to stay away. Um, it's just I don't see any other option. I don't. But I've lasted all this time. The first time I tweeted about the Nope trailer was April 27th, which I saw today. Um, and so I must have had to avoid it a couple times before that. But I've avoided it all this time. I still have not seen the Nope trailer. I'm going in blissfully ignorant to whatever is going on in that movie. And um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm seeing it in two days. Two days. Oh, the Fog score by Carpenter is really good. I, to be honest, I've forgotten about it as well. I can't remember how that one goes. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, Body Bag says Luke Skywalker. I know, and it's very weird to see him in that role. My, what are my thoughts on John Carpenter's and Deborah Hill's idea to make the Halloween films an anthology from Halloween 3 onwards? Could it have worked? Do you wish it had happened? Now I do. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong, because Halloween 4 is in my top five of the franchise. So I'm glad that 4, 5, and 6 exist. But it would have been so much cooler if they had given Carpenter free reign to, to keep up with the anthology. But Michael Myers was just too damn popular, you know? But the, the concept of Halloween 3 I love. I don't love the execution of it. I've said multiple times I would love for that movie to be remade. Uh, but the, the anthology idea, I think it'd be really cool maybe if they did it now. Although Blumhouse won't have the rights to Halloween anymore after Halloween ends. So we'll see. I, I kind of doubt it's ever going to happen. But it would have been cool. It would have been cool if it did get to happen back then. Oh, the, the actor for Cameron wouldn't let his mom watch his kill, and I can see why. Yeah, me too. Oh my god. Definitely. Thank you for the tip. Wait, you know who Roger Corman was this whole time? I've been trying to get you to watch Carnosaur. Did you know that that was a Corman movie the whole time? I did not. I did not know that was a Roger Corman movie. Oh my god. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> Uh, Christine is the most underrated Carpenter movie, in my opinion. I, I didn't love Christine, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I, I enjoyed myself with it. I, I don't, I don't think it's underrated. I think people usually cite that as one of their, one of their top three, usually with Carpenter. <clears throat> oh, Winnell dropped out of Wolfman. Okay. And is now slated for Escape from New York. Cool. I'd like to John to have a hand in it, not a must, as he should have for the thing in 2011. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, it, I think that John Carpenter should definitely have some input at this point. He just hasn't been directing for so long. It's been 12 years, almost 13, since he directed anything. So I don't know if he at least did the score. That would be amazing. That'd be fine by me. Hmm. Have I ever used a Pax 3 vape for weed? No, I haven't. But thanks for the tip. Yeah, I'm usually, usually I, I just, uh, I prefer to burn flour. I had a wax pen for a little bit, but I lost it. <laughs> I, I should get one again though, because it's so much easier, like for YouTube purposes, because then like that I can't get demonetized for that. But uh, I just prefer flour. I really do. You agree about the Twilight love? Hell yeah. Especially the first movie I rewatched many times. I love the entire franchise. And the last movie is probably my favorite of the entire franchise. It's a sign that I need to smoke a bowl. I know I don't even have any weed right now. I have like a couple edibles. I haven't been to a dispo in forever. Forever. Sometimes I just go through periods where I just don't really feel like smoking as much. But sometimes it's also because like weed is kind of expensive. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. You completed Ghost of Mars once when it came out. Wow. It felt like an accomplishment followed by immediate disappointment. That is an accomplishment. That movie was insufferable, in my opinion. I could not believe how dumb it was. It, it doesn't feel like a Carpenter movie really at all, aside from maybe the set pieces. Because to be honest, they, they did actually shoot a good amount of Escape from New York actually in St. Louis because there had been a huge fire in the middle of the city there. So they pretty much like let them go in with the film crew and do whatever they wanted, which looking back now, I mean, that just could not have been safe. But uh, anyway, the, but there are parts where it's just so painful, like how bad the, the sets looked because so much of it is clearly like on a soundstage. Uh, but yeah, Ghosts of Mars, same thing. Uh, sim similar aesthetic with like the sets, which I get, might just be a coincidence. I don't know. Cause those movies were so far apart. They came out 20 years apart from each other. So like, also why was the quality the same with Ghosts of Mars? I don't know. Uh, I need to plug in my, my computer. Oy. The grunt is never on purpose, but I always do that, don't I? Oh. Is there a Carpenter film that you didn't enjoy upon your first watch that you think is possible for you to like and enjoy on your second watch? You know, I might have a little bit more of an appreciation for Escape from New York knowing that I should have managed my expectations on how much action would be in the movie. So maybe I'd kind of pick up on 
more things within the dialogue or the story that I maybe missed out on the first time because I, I got a little bit bored. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I, another one. Hmm. Oh, I, I forgot to put, I forgot to put uh, Escape from LA on this list. I was going to go through every movie he's made like by year. I should do that because it's been almost an hour and I still haven't done that. Whoops. But I just got to put Escape from LA on here. Esca escape. That's how Dory says it in Finding Nemo. Um, okay, but another one that I didn't enjoy my first watch that I might enjoy the second time. Uh, yeah, maybe The Fog. Um, I don't know why I... Because I, I went into these movies not really having expectations, but they still didn't end up being like what I thought they would be. Uh, that's just, that's the same thing. But either way, The Fog, I might enjoy more on the second viewing. Um, I think Christine, I'll probably enjoy more on the second viewing. Because the first viewing, I don't know, you know, you're, you're worried about what's going on with the characters, the story and everything. I feel like the second time around, I'll be more focused on the cool practical effects with the car and the cool action and stuff. So maybe Christine. Big Trouble in Little China, maybe that could also be one that I'd enjoy more on the second watch. As far as the rest of them go, I don't think so. I don't see my opinion changing too much. You think Christine is underrated? Really? I feel like so many people really like that movie. <laughs> casual dickheads. Sounds like a band name. Yeah. We are. We are the casual dickheads. <laughs> you guys ready to get, get crazy? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, most of your friends like Prince of Darkness because of Alice Cooper. Yeah, it's really funny that he has a cameo in that movie. I love that Alice Cooper is so into, you know, the spirit of Halloween and horror movies and all that stuff. But he fully disappears from that movie. He's in it for like the first half. And then it, it ends and you're like, wait, wh where, where did Alice Cooper go? Like, why? <laughs> That's a bit of a loose end. Uh, excuse me. Hmm. You doubt the trailer will have spoilers. It's only a minute and 30 seconds. See, but that's enough to get a general idea of where the characters will be, like where we're going to pick up. I don't even want to know that. Like I genuinely, when there's movies that I'm interested in, I don't want to know like anything about it really at all. I didn't want to know the subject matter of Nope, but so many people were able to just kind of guess online that it like, I, I know, um, I know, but I didn't even want to know. I was just like, okay, it's directed by Jordan Peele uh it's called nope that's all i need to know that was literally all i needed to know so yeah even a short trailer it, it makes me glad they're doing that though because if i recall from last year a lot of people complained that the halloween kills trailer had a ton of spoilers in it so i'm glad that they're they're shortening it and they're approaching the marketing a little bit differently oh you hated christine and vampires they aren't your cup of tea i would agree with vampires i don't i don't think there's a single movie he made that i hate there are very, very few things in this world that I hate. So I maybe it's not fair for me to say, but yeah, the vampires I, d I did not enjoy. Are we going to get a first reaction video for Nope on Patreon? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, also, I'm, I'm going to film when I, when I get off this live. I'm also going to film my first reactions to a couple of movies. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where the crawdads sing. It's not horror by any means, but it's just, it's a drama. <clears throat> with a little bit of thriller vibes. And then American Carnage, this is a movie that was just released, um, but it stars it stars Jenna Ortega, so stars our queen. Um, and it's about, let's see, after a governor issues an executive order to arrest the children of undocumented, undocumented immigrants, the detained youth are offered an opportunity to have their charges dropped by volunteering to provide care to the elderly. Once inside the care the care facility, however, they discover more twisted secrets than they could have possibly imagined. It's a wild movie. It was not great, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna film my more in depth first thoughts on that one too. So that's coming uh, later today. So and then my next first reaction will definitely be for Nope. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm gonna try to for the for the rest of you guys that are not on Patreon, I'm gonna try my best to get my Nope review out by Saturday, but more likely it'll come out Sunday. So. Stay posted for that. Would a bigger budget have helped or hurt Halloween? Mm. Mm. You know, I feel like I have a good answer for both. It would have helped in that they would have had a little bit more time. So 
a couple of the scenes might have ended up a little more clean, um, might have ended up a little less corny, because Halloween has its moments where I'm like, mm, okay, okay. So that might have helped just giving them more time. More money does equal more time. But I think it would have hurt because the low budget charm and how, like, the graininess of it, uh, the, the amateur camera work, like, that all adds to the vibe so much. So I'm glad that it is the way that it is, you know? Yeah, horror Twitter is going to be obsessed with Halloween ends until and after it comes out. I know, that's why I'm saying, am I just going to need to stay off Twitter until October? Because it's kind of looking that way. I don't know. Mm. Oh, thank you for the tip. You didn't like Mark Hamill's segment in Body Bags. That was Toby Hooper's segment. You're consistent and I'll give you that. <laughs> I, I love that segment in Hamill and it is kind of going against type. Yeah, and I think his performance was great, but I did not love seeing him that way. And there's just, there's just some stuff that happens in that segment that I found really just gave me the ick. It was just, it was just icky. Not, not my fave. Um, I mean, it was an interesting concept though. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but I, I would recommend watching Body Bags as a one-time watch, especially if you're also a fan of like a uh, creep show. If you've seen the new series on Shudder or the original movies from the eighties, it Body Bags is a lot like creep show. I would say the same, the same kind of quality, the same kind of, uh, campy premises, you know, for the stories. Mm, let's see, there should be a remake of Christine one day. Uh, you would see that how, how and which actor and actresses in the role you would imagine. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, Christine is one of those ones where I just don't feel like that one needs a remake. I don't feel like there's a way that they could improve upon it. I mean, like, granted, I think I only gave that movie three stars, so obviously there are ways that I think it could have been improved, but in concept with today's technology, I don't think there's really a, a need for it, if that makes sense. Like, I would still want them to do it completely practically, and they did that so well in the original, so I don't know. And as far as actors, I can't say. I've, I've never thought about that. Mm. Starman and the Terminator are two awesome movies from 1984. Oh yeah, okay, so the Terminator was from 84. Amongst all the great films released that year. Yeah, and that was, I think, around that time, like, the early 80s was probably John Carpenter's biggest moment. I mean, okay, to be fair, you know what, let's just, let's go through the his whole, like, the, the, the order of everything he's directed, just so we have that straight, because I can't believe I still have not done that. Um, but really quick, thank you for the tip. You didn't enjoy the original The Fog. Dare I ask if you liked the remake or if that'll be an original versus remake video? I'm not going to do an original versus remake just because I don't think that there really would be any interest in doing that. I'm not super interested in doing that, so I can't imagine a lot of people want to see that. Um, and also, the remake kind of looked like a made-for-TV type of situation, which I don't know if it was, but... Uh, yeah, the, the original The Fog, uh, it just, there were all these insanely, like, high-profile actors of the time, Jam Jamie Lee Curtis, Tom Atkins, Adrian Barbo, who I didn't know that John Carpenter was married to for a while, for a long while there, he was married to Adrian Barbo, um, and I just felt like they, they didn't have enough to do in The Fog. There were, there were a couple good creepy scenes, but I just didn't feel like there was really enough for these big actors to be doing, like, there just was not that much going on. But anyway, okay, let's let's go through the order of his filmography. So, okay, in 1969, that was his short film in school called Captain Voyeur. Uh, that one, not great. <laughs> I gave it one star. And then in 1974, it was his first feature outside of school or like his first full-length feature period, I think. Uh, and it was called Dark Star, and he wrote it with the guy that went on to write Alien. Like, Dark Star heavily inspired Alien, which is something that I didn't know. And then the guy that did the special effects on Dark Star, he actually went on to work in Star Wars, because Dark Star is how George Lucas noticed him. Crazy. So Dark Star was, like, a big movie for a couple people's careers. And then in 76, he did Assault on Precinct 13. In 78, we had, we had two, actually, where... Uh, I think that Someone's Watching Me kind of gets overshadowed by Halloween, but Someone's Watching Me is really good. It it was actually made for TV, and granted, I think on Letterboxd, I, I said that it, it may as well have been credited to Alfred Hitchcock, because 
the directing style, the music, everything is so Hitchcockian. Uh, but it's really good. I thought it was really good. I actually watched that one this morning. It was the last one I watched. Um, and Halloween, obviously, in 78. <clears throat> And then in 79, he did another made-for-TV movie called Elvis with Kurt Russell playing Elvis. That's where he met Kurt Russell. It's about three hours long. It's not It's not bad, though. It's not bad. And then in, in 1980, we have The Fog. And then in 81, we have Escape from New York. 82, we have The Thing. 83, we have Christine. 84, we have Starman. That's just, that's insane. Can we Can we take a moment? In those five years... The Fog, Escape from New York, The Thing, Christine, and Starman. Insane lineup. That's an insane lineup. Um, 86, Big Trouble in Little China. And then the 90s are where, in my opinion, things started to get really weird. Things started to get weird. Uh, but we do, he he worked with Sam Neill a couple times. He met him doing memoirs of an invisible man, which I found that movie to be okay. Same with Body Bags. That was 95. That one's okay. Escape from LA was 96 and I didn't love that one. Um, and then, oh wait, but before that, sorry, was in 95, we have Village of the Damned. And that one I actually enjoyed. Um, and then in 1998, we have Vampires. 2001, we have Ghosts of Mars. Uh, which again, he had very little involvement in apparently. Then in 2005, that was when he did his first episode for Masters of Horror. That was Cigarette Burns. And then the next year, he did another episode for them called Pro Life. That one's... Mm, uh, no. No. And then in 2010 was the last movie he ever directed that's called The Ward. And The Ward was was strange. I also watched that one this morning before this live. And it stars Amber Heard and Danielle Panabaker, actually, and uh, Jared Harris. Like, what a weird cast. What a weird cast and, like, combination of people working together. I don't know. That just, there's a disconnect for me. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, but that's everything he's directed. So that's that's the order. Any thoughts on that, if you will? You think that Nope will be Peel's best work? That's a that's a high bar to set. I'm I'm not sure about that. I for me, it's going to be really hard to beat Get Out. I think uh, though I, I love Us. I think I rate Us as a perfect movie as well. But I don't know. I don't know. I the thing is like I never try to get my hopes up too high. Like with Halloween Ends, I'm just hoping for you know. Good score, fun kills, uh, and that our characters, you know, end their arc in a satisfying way. I'm not asking for too much more than that. Um, and same thing with Nope. Like, I'm just trying not to get my expectations up too high because I don't want to be disappointed. That's just the main thing, you know. What kind of horror film could you see Carpenter doing today? Uh, I think actually his involvement with Studio 666 made so much sense to me. I think if he partnered with other bands that love horror, that would be amazing. I think it, it, it is actually so funny to me and so awesome that a band would make a horror movie like that, just a super dumb, dark comedy, and partner up with John Carpenter. I, I would hope that he would do that more. I don't know with who else. Like, what other what other 70s rock bands where all the members are, like, still alive and would want to do that? <laughs> or they don't, they don't even have to be, like, classic rock groups, but... Yeah, just working with any rock group and making another smashing, smashing score. <coughs> yeah, Blumhouse loves littering their trailer with spoilers. It's a good point. You That's why you avoid trailers now, too. Yeah, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. I think I potentially could have liked The Black Phone a little bit more if I hadn't seen the trailer. The, the trailer of The Black Phone spoils almost the entire movie <laughs> almost the entire thing you always knew that john carpenter had an impressive resume of filmography but his accomplishments are insane in the best of ways yeah i would agree i think just just the very fact that i think i would say that probably his best work all came out in that in that decade where he made nine movies nine movies in 10 years like i don't think i don't think i can stress to you guys how insane that is I just don't think I can. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's insane. Even if I don't love all of them, like it's just, it's very impressive he was doing that. Like he was just, he was just on the move. Hmm. Oh, thank you for the tip. Not surprised you didn't love vampires. I did. I wouldn't be surprised you didn't like James Woods' character. No, I didn't like any character in that movie. <laughs> Not a single one. 
not a single one. I, I was hoping there would be at least one protagonist I would kind of enjoy and latch on to and, like, care about where they ended up. Not a one. Not a one. <laughs> so sorry about that. Oh, you totally watched The Fog Comparison? Yeah. Well, the, you know, I know there's a good amount of you that would watch pretty much anything I put out, and I do really appreciate that. Oh, gotta head out to work. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for dropping in, though. Have a good day. Be kind. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for the tip. If you could approach Carpenter about a collaboration for a new horror film, what concept slash idea would you pitch to him? Jeez. I just don't know if any of my ideas are really in line with something that Carpenter would make. Like, I I have... I have a couple ideas, but they're just, they're just like these free floating little tidbits in my mind. They're not even really ideas. And as far as where they're at right now, they're not even good ideas, but I, I think it'd be really cool to do like a fan film of a live action of Coraline, but make it way darker and more adult, you know, and I'd probably still keep the like buttons for eyes theme. Cause that's just like iconic, but yeah, I mean, I don't really, I mean, what other ideas do I even have? I had this one idea where it's like, <clears throat> I, I I watched actually uh, an old vlog of mine that I did with my mom. And I was like, what if like in the future, you know, we were able to recreate our dead relatives via AI because there is so many, you know, hours of footage of them uploaded on the internet. And I was like, oh, that'd be like really creepy. That's very much giving like a, an episode of Black Mirror. But that was another idea I had, like, you know, a girl, maybe a vlogger who, who her parents pass away, but then she recreates them and is able to like Skype with them kind of. Sorry, these are just my ideas, like not something I would approach Carpenter with necessarily, but I don't have too many other ideas right now. Um, oh, mm, I have one idea, but it's for like a 30 second short and I don't want to spoil it. Eh. So we'll see. Sorry, I don't really, I don't really have an answer for you, unfortunately, unfortunately. If I did, I'd be like, please, please send the word to him. You're vaguely aware of the ward? Yeah, that's one that really, I feel like just slipped everybody by because it's so weird. It's, it's, I didn't think it was necessarily a bad movie. It's definitely not a good movie. No, no, no. But it's, it's. I found the story really compelling and the, the twists in the story I thought were actually really interesting and I was into it. Not a good movie. Very, very bland, like very flavorless, very much does not at all feel like John Carpenter. There's one element that kind of does, but yeah, it's, it's strange. I would venture to guess that he didn't have much creative control at all over that one, honestly. Oh, Christine gave you a deep psychological fear of objects. Okay, in this case, cars. Interesting. Interesting. Can't can't say the same. But I could see that maybe if I had watched the movie when I was younger, it probably would have made me scared to get in cars. <laughs> oh, you hated the twist in the ward? Oh, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was very interesting. Thank you for the tip. I mean, I'm in no hurry for Christine remake, uh, even though it writes itself, but with modern technology and all. But I'm fine with Christine's cameo in Sharknado 4. You have so much obscure knowledge that you bring to these live streams, and I love it. I just love it. Um, I think, wait, I saw somebody, oh yeah, somebody was talking about a uh, Christine Tesla remake, but the horror comes from just trying to figure out how to actually, like, work the thing. She's not even sentient. She's just badly made. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like they'd probably go the, the the 2019 Child's Play remake route, where it's like they, they put in the, the AI kind of a vibe in there. Uh, how they did with Chucky, which I think would make sense, you know, and they would, they would, they would have a, you know, the villain character be like Sneelong Frusk or something <laughs> who owns Besla corporations. I don't know. Um, yeah, but that'd be really funny. It'd be, it would be funny if they did make it into a dark comedy, but I don't, I don't think they would do that if they made like a legitimate remake. <clears throat> Yeah, John Carpenter is more interested in music now. I'll be d d surprised if he directs the feature again. I don't think he will. And honestly, like, at, at his age as well, he's, like, in his 70s, right? Or is he in his early 80s? Please. Mm. John Carpenter. I feel like I should know this. He's 74. Okay, yeah. So he's 74. You know what? People in their 70s, like, 
good for them if they still want to make movies, but I don't think when I'm that age, I'm going to be in any type of shape to make a movie. I don't think most people like can actually wrap their minds around how grueling it is to make a movie. It is, being on set is the hardest work I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> and I can't imagine, well, it might be, it might actually be nicer being on a union set, but a lot of the same bullshit still happens. And he even said, Carpenter said, okay, so granted, this was a very low budget, one of his first movies, but on, like, for example, in Assault on Precinct 13, I, uh, in an interview, he said that their very last day of shooting, they shot for 24 hours straight. The scenes that were in <clears throat> all the, all the jail rooms, they shot for 24 hours straight. So, and stuff like that happens, even on union jobs, they'll just be like, screw it. We're going to pay everybody overtime. We need to get this. And you'll end up working like an 18 hour day. Like, so yeah, I don't see him. I don't see him ever directing again, unfortunately, but I just don't see it. Um, and I, I'm glad that he still loves making music and he's still doing that. So, you know, good for him for where he's at, honestly, in his career. I know that people, I mean, he had like a, a slump period, I guess you could say, which was like the early 2000s and maybe you could say the 2010s, but he's back in it, you know, and he's, he's been composing pretty much this whole time. <clears throat> But he just had, I think the commercial failures started with Memoirs of an Invisible Man. And granted, he had also taken like a six-year break between that and Big Trouble in Little China. And then from that, it just was kind of like a decline in his, you know, director directing stuff. So, oh, if I could be in any John Carpenter film, which would I choose? Oh, like in, a, in an existing one? Thank you for the tip, by the way. Oh my gosh, which, hmm, hmm. It depends if you mean, okay, I'll, I'll answer both because I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean, uh, like, would I want to be a character in one of the stories or would I have wanted to act in and, like, work with Carpenter on one of the movies? Because for sure, if I was, like, acting, I uh, would not want to be in The Thing. They they actually shot the entire second act on location <laughs> in the freezing cold. So, yeah, definitely not The Thing. Um, hmm. It's kind of cliche to say I would have loved to have been like a victim in Halloween, you know? Mm -hmm. I th Oh, you know what? You know what? I think this is an easy answer. I think Big Trouble in Little China because they they said that they, they just had a blast working on that movie because they were kind of tweaking what the studio wanted a little bit and just sort of ran with it. And he said that he and Kurt Russell had so much fun making that movie. And so I would have loved to have been a part of that. Absolutely. They brought in... Um, so, so many masters of martial arts that they got to work with and they had a lot of fun, you know, shooting all the fight sequences and stuff. And unluckily, I mean, you wouldn't know it because the movie does look really good and the action sequences are really good, but they, they didn't have any kind of wiring. Um, I think they, they, he might've said that they had it for like one scene or one shot, but they had to do most of it using like trampolines, you know, and they have those iconic shots of them like jumping to fight in the air and stuff. They had used trampolines. So that just would have been a, that would have been a blast. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. I, I should get ready for my appointment. This was awesome. A vampires over Twilight any day of the week. We shall agree to disagree. I hope that you don't have any cavities and that it is a quick and easy appointment. Thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> oh, how would Jaws have gone if John Carpenter had directed it? You know, I you could actually draw a lot of parallels between Halloween and Jaws, I would say. Even with how, like, the score is utilized or, you know, I mean, I even mentioned, like, the, the score from The Thing, I think, is pretty similar to Jaws. Not, not necessarily in the sound, but just how the, it's like the really simple two-note kind of a moment. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that it would have been too different, honestly, aside from the fact that I think that Carpenter... Definitely would have loved a little bit more gore, though if if it came out in the same year, still 75, that was definitely before Carpenter got into like practical effects and all of that. So maybe not, maybe not. But yeah, if, if he were to direct that, you know, in the 80s or something, I think he definitely just would have made it a lot gorier. But that's the only thing I think that would be that different. Interesting question, though. Um... Oh, oh yeah, the Black Phone and Freaky are the Halloween Horror Nights houses for Blumhouse this year. I think that's super exciting because I love Freaky. I adore that movie. Um, and the Black Phone, I think you could easily make into a, a really scary maze. So I'm super excited for Horror Nights. Oh, 
very excited. Though I think I'm probably going to have to end up going in September because I'm going to be I'm going to be traveling quite a bit this fall. So, alas, but maybe it'll be less busy. Last year the lines were stupid. They were insane. And I only got to go through like five of the mazes. That sucked. Anyway, but I mean, it was still a good time. I got drunk too. <laughs> uh. So far, the reviews for Nope are really positive. Yeah, um, I, I literally saw, I think it was James uh, tweeting on the dead meat Twitter. And he was like, Nope was such a breath of fresh air. And immediately I just closed the app. I, I just literally closed it after that. Because um, I was like, Nope, I don't even want to know. <laughs> But yeah, I, that's that that is assuring. It is it is reassuring. Let's see. Oh, isn't Cronenberg in his 70s? He might be older. Cronenberg um he, he might be like late 70s. I think he might be 79. David Cronenberg. Let's see. He's 79. Yep. Yep, and he is still directing. I I mean, ugh, I can't believe it. There well, there, there might be ways to do it. For one thing with Cronenberg, what I learned when I was researching Crimes of the Future, they don't do nearly as much pre-production for his movies as you would think. Viggo Mortensen said that <clears throat> they don't really do much. There's something beeping outside in my neighborhood. I don't I hope you can't hear that. But he said that essentially they, they wouldn't really shot list anything. And you can kind of tell, like, the cinematography is not the best in Crimes of the Future, but they wouldn't really have a shot list. They, they would show up, see what the set looked like, and then kind of go from there. And he would collaborate with the actors on their, their blocking, so they wouldn't even really plan that out first. So if you're not really stressed about having everything go according to plan the way that you, you planned it and did all this and you're not stressing about that on set, you kind of just show up and do it, then that would be probably a much less stressful experience, though... I feel like for me, that would be a lot more stressful, but, uh, you know, for him, he's been doing this for decades, so it's obviously not as, not as difficult for him. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, wow, I've been live almost an hour and a half now. I think I'll probably sign off in, like, the next 10 minutes or so. My, my throat, maybe it's because I did a live on, did I go live on Sunday? I think, yeah, I went live two days ago. Maybe that's why. I just need to give myself a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a rest in between. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Oh my god, you got to see him perform music from all his films? I am so jealous. That's incredible. I'm so happy for you. That is, that's amazing. Um, let's see. Oh, if, if Carpenter would have been directed by Jaws, how do you see Halloween being, dire being directed if it were directed by Spielberg? Sheesh. I think Spielberg has a much better way of getting you to care about the characters, I think. And it's it's a lot more about that emotional journey than it is about, you know, I feel like with, with Carpenter, it is more centered on the horror and the suspense and everything, especially with Michael Myers. So I, I think that Spielberg definitely would have made it a lot more like Poltergeist. Like I would just think of Poltergeist. It's the same, you know, and Poltergeist was produced by Spielberg. <clears throat> and it just would have had more of that like, really, really comfy, small town, like family kind of vibe. I don't know if it would have been quite as centered on Lori, you know, and babysitting, but I mean, maybe, but it, it, he probably would have like developed Lori's relationship with the kids a little bit more or something like that. And it just would have been, mm, well, Jaws was pretty, pretty chilling. I was going to say it probably would have felt a little bit more warm and fuzzy, but nah, nah. Yeah, that's that. There's my answer. Would have just developed the characters more probably, and the and and their arcs, you know. Oh, Kurt Russell based his big travel character off off of John Wayne, I believe. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. That's funny though. Um. Oh, you're going to Orlando Horror Nights. That's cool. That's a that's like a bucket list item though. I don't I don't have a huge desire to really ever go to Florida, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I noped on the nope trailer. This is true. This is surely true. Oh, anyone seen Mad God? I hated it. It's a disgusting movie. You know, it was on my list. It's been on my list for a while. If you guys don't know what this is, it's apparently a movie that's been like a decade in the making or something that someone was finally able to make and release and it's stop motion animation, if I remember correctly. So it was really interesting to me. I think it's on Shudder. So I think I might still watch it just because you're having a very like 
visceral reaction, it seems. So now my interest is really peaked. Although from your review, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to like it now. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, but you loved it. Okay. All right. We'll see. Oh my God. This might be like the first time I've really actually truly been almost caught up with the chat. This is a big day, you guys. <laughs> Oh, will Emmett Shyamalan be part of my director series? He's one of your favorites. Yes, he will be. Absolutely. The ones that I want to do for sure, um, obviously Craven. Really want to do uh, Shyamalan and Flanagan. And then we, we had talked about quite a few more, all of us, on one of my last live streams. So I, I did mean to go back and like rewatch that and write them all down, <laughs> but I just haven't done that yet. But yeah, I do. Oh, and, and James Wan, Lee Wan L. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a good, good few of them. I hear the beeping in the background. I know. So it's probably, it's going to be a good time for me to sign off soon. Cause that's just going to drive me up the wall. I don't know what that is. It's not like a, it's not like a car horn going off, you know, like a wee, wee, wee. It's so random too. I haven't noticed that it's going off like every 30 seconds or anything like that. It just, it's just going off. Like what's going on out here. Maybe I'll just go out and like, just yell into the street. <laughs> just kidding. Don't do that. Oh, Ridley Scott is going to have to be dragged off set before he quits directing. Yeah, Ridley Scott might be another good one to do. Somebody also recommended George A. Romero, but I so there it is again. But I I just don't know if I want to watch that many zombie movies. I'm not I'm not the craziest about zombie movies, but he is an icon. He is an icon. Oh, you live in Florida? How's that? How, how you doing down there? Uh, Orlando Horror Nights is a lot bigger than Hollywood. Oh, I know. I know. And you have the original houses. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of a bucket list thing. Like, I I, I want to get out there to see what Orlando Disney is like and what Orlando Universal is like. Uh, and, like, you know, the Harry Potter world and everything. But don't have, a, don't have the strongest desire because that's all, I know that's also just going to be hell on earth. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, I skipped the pitch of Michael Myers versus Eerie Girl. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I could see if Carpenter would be into that. That'd be fun. I don't know if he would be. I don't think he would ever want to direct anything Halloween related again. Yeah, I think Assault on Precinct 13 is underrated, especially because it's, it's not really horror. It's more of like an action thriller kind of, um, but definitely one of the first of its kind. I think it was one of the first big uh, cable movies, one of the first big cable, yeah, I think that's what they said. They, they were talking about it in one of his interviews. Um, and I don't want to say what happens, but it's it, it did something that no movie had ever done before. I'll say that. That was very, like, jarring for audiences, which I'll, I'll probably talk about when I do my ranking, though. Um, oh, if John could have written and directed any movie in any horror franchise, which would I like to see? Definitely A Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that Carpenter definitely would have brought his own crazy balls to the wall kind of crazy vibe to a nightmare movie. And granted, a lot of those movies already go off the rails, but it would have been interesting to see Carpenter's touch on that for sure. Um, or, or a Hellraiser. I think the thing and the thing feels a little similar to Hellraiser. Maybe it's just because of the practical effects and everybody hails the thing as having the best practical effects of all time, where I don't feel like Hellraiser gets the same love, but the practical effects in Hellraiser are crazy. They're crazy. So I'd also love to see him make a Hellraiser movie for sure. Absolutely. If I watch Mad God, I have to do a review. I'd probably do my first reaction for my patrons, but I don't think that's what I'll do a full dedicated review for. Just because like not a lot of people have heard about it and I don't think a lot of people would be super into it, you know? <laughs> As a Floridian, you are right to not to want to come here. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Oh, Mad God was 30 years in the making. Okay, I knew it was something crazy like that. Certainly not for everyone, but really well done and interesting to deep dive into. Okay. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, if I met John, what advice or question would you ask him? Oh my God. I don't know. I, well, hmm. I, you know, I would probably ask him if it was worth it not to sell out. Because he, his movies did start to have, you know, commercial uh, failure. I don't know if technically they were bombs, but I know that he just was seeing less and less success as he went along. But 
for the most part, for most of his career, he remained independent and wrote a lot of his own movies and produced a lot of his own movies. And so I'd probably ask him, like, was that worth it? You know, because the, the current track that I'm on, it is very, very appealing to me to, you know, do the crowdfunding thing, work with my friends, have complete creative control, you know? That is so appealing to me. But I, I do wonder if he has any regrets about that, if he feels like he maybe would have been more successful, if he would have had more opportunities, if he kind of like maybe gave into, you know, studio opportunities. I, I'd be curious about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would have, I would have a lot of questions for that man, I think, but that's the, that's the first one. Definitely. I would ask. Oh yeah. I would definitely do Don Mancini. I mean, he, what, what else has he done besides child's play though? Let me just look up this man because like honestly what what else has he done <laughs> he probably did some more like amateur stuff before the first movie right let's see yeah he really has not done much besides child's play so that video would kind of turn into a child's play ranking but let's see he does he has one called zapatella what the hell is that in Search of Darkness from 2019. Oh, interesting. Okay. One called Cave Dweller in 1988. Oh, same year as Child's Play. Interesting. But yeah, he really has not done much else. So I, I probably would not cover Don Mancini. But I mean, I love the guy. I think his career is fascinating. Um, let's see. Oh, hey, Jennifer Vegas here. Very nice. I'm going to sign off soon. So sorry, but thanks for popping in. Oh, David Fincher. I don't know. I honestly, have I even seen any of his movies? I mean, I'm sure I've seen at least one, but I'm really not, I'm just not familiar with him at all. Let's see his movies. Oh, he did Fight Club. Oh, oh okay. I've seen Seven. I've seen Zodiac. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not super big on dramas. You know, I love a good one every once in a while, but his stuff is mostly drama, like dark dramas. So, um, I, I don't think I would do David Fincher, no. Oh, wait, Ridley Scott? No, 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 he didn't do zombie movies. I was talking about George A. Romero. Did I mix them up? Might have said that on accident. Mad God is unlike anything you'll ever see. It's an experience. Okay. All right, but but very gory. Okay. Um, I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. The main reason, honestly, I mean, okay, my throat is starting to hurt, but also because of this freaking beeping. Like, what is going on today? I'm having all kinds of technical hiccups. It's been a weird day, but also I feel like we've had a really good chat and I didn't know the chat would be this active talking about just one director. So it's really nice to see. It's It's been fun with you guys. Glad to have you here. Um, but I think, oh, I think people are talking about Sam Raimi in the chat. That is, he is someone that I actually would probably do because he's done a lot of interesting stuff outside of horror as well. So that'd be a really interesting ranking. Um, but anyways, I'm so glad to have had you guys here. I hope to catch you in the next one. I think my next one is going to be a physical media collection update because I do, I have some stuff that I have thrifted. Um, I got, I got something from George in the mail, which you already know, but I'll include it. And then I got a couple more DVDs from my grandma and grandpa's place. And then Horror Pack actually sent me a box. So I think I'm going to open this on my next live stream. And then, but before that, I might, I have a Target gift card as well. So I might go see what new Blu-rays are out um, and do that. And then do one more, one more little thrifty trip to Goodwill. Maybe use a little bit of my birthday money. Um, I found some really good stuff. It's, it's going to be a good haul. So yeah, that'll be my, that'll be my next live. Hope, I hope you'll be interested. Um, and I hope that you have a great day wherever you are. And, I, and that I'll see you. I already said, I hope I'll see you in the next one, but I hope I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.